I uh, want to welcome to the program Jane Hampshire. Uh, she's the proprietor of Fire Dog Lake, and she's one of the architects of this plant. Well, Jane, I'll let you talk about it because what you guys have been able to do over the past 24 hours is is pretty amazing. Well, it's, it's a myth that this happened over the last 24 hours. It's sort of the past 53 days now. It's been a darn hard slog, and it kind of all came to a head in the past 24 hours. But, uh, yes, it's, it's, well, I'm pretty amazed, days. too. We're, I think I'm going to have to go, like, uh, out and celebrate with some people tonight and try to adjust to the notion that liberals are fighting because it's kind of disorienting. Now, for the past 53 days, you have been doing basically your whip count project. Uh, first, tell us about that. Well, when the Republicans agree to go against anything in a block, that means that there are 40 Democrats can stop anything from going through. So 40 progressive Democrats can say, if there's no public plan, there's no health care bill. So you've got the teabaggers showing up and scaring people in close districts, but what about the people who are in plus 53 districts, you know, uh, plus 33 districts whose Democratic majorities are, are really strong and are in no danger. Um, and what about them? They can, 40 of their, I think, 107 members of the House, Democratic members of the House, who are in Democratic plus 10 districts, which means nobody's taking their seat from the Republican side. So if you can get 40 of them to say, we're going to hold the line, nothing can pass the House. So we began our campaign to try and get members of the House to commit to that. And the fact that that was, it was extraordinarily difficult to do uh, kind of what clued us to the fact that uh, they knew that the public plan was going to be a goner and that they were going to have their arms twisted to vote for some crappy bailout bill. And so we just doubled our efforts. And so when the White House backtracked this week, uh, progressives were sort of on notice of what was expected of them, what people in their districts wanted, what was the appropriate, you know, what, what people thought was the appropriate response. And 60 of them came out and said, we're drawing a line in the sand. We're not going to vote for any bill that doesn't have a public option. And we had five others who had already made that commitment to us so that weren't on the list. So that's 65. And if 40 are needed to defeat it, you know, that's a good number. I mean, this is this is a. I mean, in addition to this being, I think, very exciting and a, a milestone in what's happening. I think with with what what influence the net roots have uh, in the development of policy. This is a, a change uh, of tactics in, in some way, right? I mean, in, in the past, there's been an attempt to go after directly go after the blue dogs, let's say, or to go after um, uh, Democrats who are not, you know, to whip other Democrats. But this is an acknowledgement, essentially, that the net roots have uh, a lot of their leverage with uh, with progressives. Well, it was a, it was it, we sort of you know progressive votes never meant anything before. They could stand up and start talking about how they would oh, if they were in power they would end the war and they would uh, you know defund it until we brought the troops home. Yeah. And they'd raise all kinds of money, and they were, you know, really bold when it didn't mean anything. And then once, you know, they're in power and their votes could actually do something, well, they weren't quite so excited about doing that anymore. Well, who doesn't, isn't going to be happy about that? The people in their districts who've been supporting them for years on good intentions, who, you know, kind of thought that they worked really hard to get it to a place where their votes did matter. So if we could activate those people, we could, you know, we could form this block and, and keep this you know, bad bill from passing. The progressives are just notoriously bad at leveraging their numbers. The blue dogs have been doing this for a long time, and it just didn't look like the progressives were going to do it themselves. So we thought, well, we'll try and whip them externally. We'll just just make them go on the record to their constituents about where they stand. And that really is all that we were doing. And the resistance was tremendous. I, I can imagine. And it, it certainly helped have Mike Stark out there putting a lot of people on record. But I want to talk about... Um, I want to talk about this this notion. I mean, I think people don't realize this, but the the so-called Blue Dog Caucus has almost only half the membership of the progressive of the so-called Progressive Caucus. Blue Dogs have 53, I think. The Progressive Caucus has a little over 80, but if you combine the Progressive Caucus with the Hispanic Caucus and the um, the Congressional Black Caucus and the Asian Pacific Caucus, which they frequently and they frequently act together. Um, they, you know, initially came out and called for a public plan together, the four caucuses. I think there's like 117 members. So, yeah, over twice the number of the Blue Dogs. Now, there are some more conservative members in those caucuses, so those numbers aren't firm. 
But, you know, they, they definitely have the numbers to be able to stop legislation from passing if, if they want to. Do you think to a certain extent that the there is an appreciation? I mean, I'm certainly there's some uh, progressives uh, uh, members of this talk to appreciate appreciate what you're doing just from the sense of uh, they felt a little bit lonely. But I mean, do you think there's also an appreciation even from those who are reluctant? I mean, I'm reminded by that story, and I don't know if it's apocryphal, but where supposedly FDR was responding to some liberal activists at the, early in his uh, presidency and basically said, "I agree with you. Now make me uh, now make me do it." I mean, do you think they appreciate the idea that, that in some level uh, what you're doing gives them some type of cover? When they go and they talk to their colleagues, they say, look, I have no choice here. Uh, oh. I cannot, uh, you know, I can't, I can't vote for a bill that doesn't have a public option or I'm beginning to, um, to rile up my electoral base. I, I think that there's both feelings. I mean, they didn't like being asked to make this commitment because it put them at odds with the White House. Even though the White House was saying, we, you know, we support a public plan, they didn't. They'd probably already dealt it away. Sorry, that's just the truth. So the members didn't want to make this commitment and kind of bust that, that myth. Um, you know, they, they knew what the reality of the situation was, so they didn't really want to say why they didn't want to do it. But they knew that uh, making that commitment would wind up ultimately putting them on the other side of the White House. And that's where they are now, and that's sort of what's happened this week. Now, the White House has dialed it back, but, you know, if you look over the records of what happened the last few months, it, it, it's been gone for a while. They dealt it away to keep the stakeholders at the table, um, you know, the pharma, the AHIP, the device manufacturers, the hospitals, the AMA. You know, that's how they kept them from, you know, bailing on the plan, taking out a bunch of ads against uh, vulnerable Democrats and joining with the Republicans. So it's been gone. And I think that members of the Progressive <laughs> Caucus... Huh? I mean, that's going to help them to some level. I mean, when they, when they get that phone call from Rahm Emanuel and he's, uh, you know, uh, swearing at them about their, uh, their now signing on to uh, this notion that they're not going to vote for something without a public option. It's got to help them to be able to say, well, look, you know, we've got these people banging down our doors now. But let me ask you, ask you this. I mean, t tell us about what you've got going uh, in the past 24 hours. I know this is the, the culmination, but this has been incredibly impressive. You've raised well over $100,000 now. Uh, tell us, I think uh, we're close to 160. We put the 65 members on an Act Blue page and just you know, with uh, Coast Iris, like Dante Ad, David Atkins, and uh, Across Blue America, the blogs, and through FDL, we just put it up. And the next thing you knew, there was like $160,000 for these 64 candidates, most of whom are incumbents. They're all incumbents, but but have never made any money online before as wow. as campaign donations. Because normally we get behind the challengers. You know, that's sort of the exciting story. Let's take on the you know, the Republicans or Joe Lieberman. Um, incumbents don't generally get that much. So this is a whole new relationship between online donors and incumbents, progressives. And this is very much sort of the carrot and stick type of uh, dynamic you got going. Absolutely. We are, you know, we <laughs> we were calling them. As you said, we were sending Mike Stark up there to get them on video. It was nowhere to run. We were very insistent that, you know, you we tear up your card. We tear up your progressive card over this one. You don't get a free vote. Everybody took bad votes on uh, Waxman Markey. I think there were three votes of conscience on that. They, everybody made deals to get something for their district, and Big Cole got all their, you know, bailout. Um, and that's not going to happen this time. We're watching. This is not a free vote. So, yes, there are constituents applying pressure and giving them rewards for doing the right thing. All right. Well, folks, you can uh, help uh, contribute to that effort by heading over to firelake.com. Uh, Jane Hampshire, thank you so much for joining us and talking about this and, and the work you're doing. Uh, she has been whipping this. You can follow her on uh, Twitter at, uh, I think it's uh, twitter.com forward slash Jane Hampshire. Is that right, or Fire Dog Lake? That's it. It's Jane Hampshire. And the other thing I'll say is if you have a local blog, please go to Fire Dog Lake and sign up to be part of our whip count effort because we want to reach into every single community through the local blogs and be able to empower local blogs to interact with their representatives and have, you know, have influence in these kinds of situations. Fantastic. I think, folks, uh, you know, we're witnessing a watershed moment here, I think. I, I think we're finally seeing now uh, the net roots grow into their own and uh, begin to sort of adapt, I think quicker even, frankly, than the, the Democratic members of Congress to being uh, in the uh, majority, 
to this new uh, political reality that we're faced with.